am Grace, KM4TX team. I'm Faith Hannah, AE4FH. And I'm Hope, KM4IPF. And welcome, and welcome to, to HamRadio.World. So a lot of people have asked us to make a video about the Go Box, things about the Go Box, things in the Go Box, how I made the Go Box, and different things about the Go Box. So we're going to make one now. So what we use them the Go Box for mainly is um, we like to have a home station that we can use fixed for getting on the radio just normally for our nets and all but we also like to um, have it for emergencies and just everyday fun portable use um, for emergencies like you could have it at home or if you need then you can take it out with you and go somewhere um, so we get to use it like at field day winter field day for the QSO party because we live in Florida um, we get to use it at small ham fests and all. And we get to use it at, we've done Ponson and Lighthouse sometimes, um, at the beach a few times. So we have a lot of uses for it, and that's why we like to, to take it instead of just having one in the car and in the house. So we have this Gator six rack unit, I think it's called, and we got it at Sam Ash Music, and this LifePo battery that we have um, right here so that this video can be made with the radio is on, so we don't have to plug it all into the wall and all that stuff. And this up here is a LiveWire PC1100 power conditioner, and it takes 120 volts AC and cleans up the waveform so that if someone brings a cheap generator for some reason, it will make the waveform more like a sine wave, which is what the radio takes. And we also have these microphone clips. This one has the microphone on it, so you can see how it's a microphone clip. Without them, we couldn't find a place for the microphones to go in the go box without them falling out. So we got these, and it turns out they fit perfect. And when you close the lid, the microphones are, can be still on, and it closes without getting caught up or anything. So we are now going to take it apart to show you how the stuff is installed. So we will do that in a little bit, so keep watching. So here we have the bottom shelf of the Go Box. Here's the FT991, and here is the LDG Electronics YT1200 Auto Tuner, which is attached by Velcro Industrial Strength. So Daddy's going to line it up as we show you, because um, it's it, you need a whole Husky team basically to get it undone if you get it, if you need it off for some reason or if you don't line it up right. So Daddy will be doing that. But we will be using, with the help of Daddy, putting this back onto its bracket mount. And the bracket mount... We didn't really want to drill holes, so we figured out that if you line it up just right, the vent holes, you can stick the screws in, and it fits just perfect. And this is a connector that we use to plug in several headsets to the radio at once. We've been sick, sorry. Yeah, we have a cold, but don't worry, there are no germs on television. Mm -hmm. And we decided that sometime in the future, we will probably get a different one that is like a box that you can attach several headphones to and you can control the volume of each independently. Like one that our friend Jeff, NM1Y, had when we went to Sabo with the Youth DX Adventure. So we are now going to put in the radio, which we have disconnected the data connector from the radio so that when we put it in, it won't accidentally get broken. So, Daddy. Okay. We need to line it up just right and screw them in without scratching it. Well, what happened to the top of the radio? I don't know if you want to talk oh. about that. Oh, more that way. Um, on the top of the radio there, um, something happened to it as we were putting it in. It. Um, it scrapes the top of 
the ends of those, um, the bolts where we put the speakers on, they were a tiny bit long. So they kind of scratched it because we weren't being that careful because we didn't know about it. And this is kind of hard. This. I can't see where it is, so you need to let us know where it needs to go. It needs to go right there. Hold it still. Okay, now we have it. Now the other end. Oh, she got it. Now the other end is probably lined up good, so we can get that. Then we need to get uh, this middle one. Where's the hole? Oh, these go forward quite a bit, actually. Down a little bit. It is no, very uh, hard, but once you have it, it will be fun. Um, oh, I can't see it anymore. Okay, let's try there. Okay, that's about good. Okay, then the last one. So, right? Seeds. There we go. So the radio is now hooked up. And where are the wires like this? What did you? And the the ground wires were short. What did you guys do there? The ground wires are short even though you may need a long one to get to the thing because we have a um, ground wire um, bus that we have there um, in the back of the radio case and that holds a whole bunch of different ground wires at a time then it is um, put forward into one that all of them get grounded in the to the ground and the wires I believe are like this so they don't get all tangled and messy okay so what's so next Daddy so now we need to put this in okay, so Daddy will do light. that and this could the, be hard the velcro is um, industrial strength velcro and it is hard to get it to come back apart straight here So if you don't get it straight the first time, it's hard. If you remember the way we did this is we um, we stuck the Velcro to the bottom of the tuner and then we connected the two pieces of Velcro together and then we pulled the sticky backing off of the Velcro that was going to go on the shelf and then we carefully did that and then you guys pushed down hard on it. It's almost permanent. You need a husky team to get it off. <laughs> So now we've got to put the uh, connector back onto the back of the radio, and how about we let Grace do that? Okay, keep watching. So Grace, why don't you start plugging in the tuner connections? And while she's doing that, some of you may be wondering why there's no fuse on this power cord. Well, the reason is we have a rig runner in the back of the go box, and one more thing about the rig runner is it has no bracket. So in the next video, we will also show you how we engineered how to put it in without using a bracket. So she's still screwing them in. So... Which side are you on? And when she's done with that, we will start the second video showing the top rack. So here we are with the top shelf of the Go Box. Here is the Astron power supply that we use when we're inside. And we have speakers for the HF and the 2 meters. And behind those are ferrite chokes with the wires from the speakers wrapped around so that when we transmit, no RFI gets to the speakers. And we have a rig runner back here, which we have installed by the screw holes are right on top of the vent holes. So we just stuck the screws down in there. And this is where the power supply connects to the rig runner. When we want to use it at home, we just plug it in. And when we want to use like a solar power or something, it'll come. We just unplug it and plug in the solar panel there. So I'm just gonna plug that back in. And we're about to have a storm, it seems like. It's off to our east a little bit. So that's, we don't have anything connected to the antennas and we're under cover, so we should be good. And 
under here, we have the FT8800, which is our 2 meter radio. And we have it connected by a bracket underneath. And this actually sits right on top of the tuner when it's in. So here we also have a little mini band plan book. Very handy. <laughs> and in a little bit, Zechariah will talk about how he engineered how to install the power supply onto the shelf. So we'll get him out here and he will have his turn for talking about it. Hi, I'm Zechariah, WX4TVJ, and I'm going to show you how to mount, how we mounted the Astron power supply to our go box. So, um, we decided we'd mount them uh, through screw holes that are at the um, feet. And uh, we got some longer screws from this really cool place called Skycraft. Really cool place. I get a lot of parts from there. Uh, a lot of my projects. But anyway, the only problem was the back um, screw holes didn't line up with any of the slots. So what we did was we took some a piece of paper, punched it through all the screw holes on the bottom of the power supply, and um, mounted the power supply on its uh, front screw holes, turned the whole rack upside down, um, we lined up the paper with the two screws on the rack, and the remaining holes we drilled right through, and that's where the uh, other screws are mounted, the back screws. And that's how we mounted the power supply. Well, that's rare for Zechariah to be in one of our videos. Usually he's off doing something else, like building a model airplane or something. Yeah, I wonder what he is doing right now. Maybe he's working on a kid, or maybe it is a model airplane. Or maybe taking something apart that's broken to get useful parts out of it. Or ho hopefully it is something broken instead of something Hi. useful. Guys! What? Huh? He's eating a pretzel! What? <laughs> to the rig runner um, and these have fuses on them for this one because it doesn't have a fuse so it's good for on this. This one goes to 25 amp and this one to 15 amp. This one is from the 2 meter. This is from the HF. This goes from the power strip to the um, the power supply and um, so we now that we have this in we need to get this also this is for the HF rig external speaker we need to get that in and um, you can't quite see it um, oh here it is you can kind of see it I guess but um, there are chokes on this to keep the RFI out of our um, power supply and all and we need to Ground these, of course, for if it storms or anything. So just unscrew them, place them in somewhere. And you need to get them into the um, grounding bus, this 
strip is called. And these are the braids. They're good for grounding because, well, for several reasons. But uh, we need to plug them all in. Yes, thank you. Just in case it could storm, we want to be safe so we have it grounded. Then in one of these screw areas, we plug in another one and it goes into a ground rod into the ground. Um, you can just drive it into this, the ground somewhere. As long as you don't run into any pipes, you need to make sure you know where they are. Um, for, for when you're wanting to be portable or something. Or you can just have one under the floors or somewhere. Because you always need to be safe. Lightning, it strikes your antenna goes through, you want to get it to the ground because um, some of you may have done Skywarn training. It wants to go to the ground. So, um, double check everything. Yes, it looks like everything is in. This one you can actually, this one, you can unplug and you can also put in a battery if you don't want to use this power supply, which then plugs into the wall if you want to use home things. We've got everything um, put back together and all, and everything's set up, and it's about to storm, so we do need to hurry up and get everything hooked up and grounded, of course. But well, we hope you learned something from this video. So, yeah, so. that's it for now. Keep going back to ham radio. Oh, yeah. I brought you guys some more pretzels. Oh, come on, thank you. 73 okay. toodles, aloha, um, adios. Oh, That's ciao. That's Vidania or Poca Poca. Poca Poca.